Now let's find the exact value of a quadrantal angle. So I want to find, in this example, all six trig functions of pi. So let's draw the Cartesian plane and angle pi. Pi is just 180 degrees. Oh, yeah. Now, my previous examples, I was letting the radius be 1 and then going off and finding the x's and y's, and those were all dealt with a right triangle. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm supposed to draw a right triangle from just this one dot. But I, I think I can label that dot. If I let the radius be 1, like I have been doing, so, you know, kind of picture that I've got this circle, and I'm letting the radius of the circle be one unit. Then what would be the coordinate out here? What's that x value and what's that y value? If I start from the origin and go this direction one, what is that x value? Well, hopefully you see it's a negative one. And the y, what would be the y value here? I don't go up or down, so this is going to be 0. Well, as long as I have these three pieces of information, I can tell you the six trig values. So, let's just go in order. Sine of pi. Sine is defined as the y value over the radius. So we have 0 over 1 which is simply zero. Sine of pi is zero. Cosecant of pi is describing this situation. It's defined as the reciprocal of sine, or the radius over the y. Ooh, what is one divided by zero? Yeah, I don't know either. We say this is undefined. We're not really supposed to be div uh, dividing by zero. So we just say that cosecant of pi is undefined. All right, moving on. Cosine of pi, well, that's the x value over the radius. So we're talking about a negative 1 over 1, or just negative 1. Cosine of pi is this x value, which is negative 1. Hmm. Secant, the reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Tangent of pi. Tangent of pi is defined as the y value over the x. Well, the y value is 0, and the x value is negative 1. I can do that. 0 divided by a number, well, that's legit. That's 0. And cotangent, the reciprocal, that's a problem. That would give us negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. So these quadrantal angles, you may have some undefined uh, results when you're trying to divide by 0. So just be aware of that. But that's how I would handle the quadrantal angles. You just draw the angle like normal. You can't draw a right triangle, but you can start to label your x, your y, and if you let that radius be 1. Now there is something I'd like to maybe notice here. When I said cosine of pi is simply this x value, that point is negative 1, comma 0. When the radius is 1 and you divide by 1, that's not doing much to it. So I'm simply looking at a cosine value, and then the 0, that was just the sine value. So the y value is just the sine value. So when dealing with the unit circle, it's safe to say that cosine is simply x and sine is simply y. So 
sine is defined as y over r. But if that radius is just going to be 1, then this is a nice um, translation. And I can do the reciprocals similarly. Cosecant of theta would be 1 over y. Basically, it's just the reciprocal of y. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, but cosine is just x. So 1 over x. Now, tangent is defined as y over x, but we just said y is sine and x is cosine. So I feel comfortable saying tangent is equivalent to sine over cosine. Cotangent, its reciprocal, similarly would be cosine over sine. So these are two relationships of the one I'm focusing in on right now. These we call quotient identities. They are always true. We know that tangent is defined as y over x, but in both those situations, they're like under little r's. If the r's are 1, if the r's are 2, they're going to be the same radius. So in the end, you're just going to have sine over cosine, or y over x. If you have taken pre-calculus before, then you know there are um, identities coming up where we will verify identities. These are the, kind of the first ones in this uh, lecture series that we've come across. But I'm about to give you six more, which come from right here. They're just the, the reciprocal identities. And they claim you already know them. So let's go back to this. Sine of theta, we can just call that y. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I just want to I just want to say that the sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So in the past I've been I had a value and I just reciprocate it. But now I'm just going straight to it to it. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. This means if I were to reciprocate cosecant, I would get sine. And I can do this other direction. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. That one over notation, that's just fancy talk for I need to reciprocate. All right, we know cosine has a reciprocal secant, and that makes secant the reciprocal of cosine. These are identities. Tangent. It's the reciprocal of cotangent. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. This may not pop up in um, homework this week or in a few videos, but they will come at us pretty strong when we start to verify these trigonometric identities. So I recommend. I just boxed them, so maybe if you want to start making note cards or just whenever you think of sine, think of it as a reciprocal of cosecant, just maybe become familiarized with this um, terminology. Alright, I want to do one more example of a fourth. So let's do that. I'm going to make the angle as nasty as I can and show you that you're, pre you're prepared now for any angle I give you. Scary. Okay. I want to find the exact value of cosine of negative 13 pi fourths. 
Oof. Okay. I need to draw this angle. One method to draw this angle would be to convert it to degrees and then count out the degrees. I, though, am going to start counting by pi fourths. So please watch and see if you can follow along. I'm going to draw the Cartesian plane. I need to go in the negative direction, which is clockwise, and I need to count by pi fourths. Remember, pi fourths is just one pi cut into four equal slices. So you have one, two, three, four. So every 45 degrees, or negative 45 degrees, is a negative pi fourths. This is negative one pi fourths. This is negative 2 pi fourths. Here I have negative 3 pi fourths, negative 4, negative 5 pi fourths, negative 6 pi fourths, negative 7 pi fourths. A full revolution would get me to negative 8 pi fourths, which reduces to negative 2 pi. Keep going. It was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12. This is negative 13 pi fourths. Negative 13 pi fourths is coterminal to negative 5 pi fourths. They look the exact same when drawn in standard position. I need a right triangle. I'm going to draw a perpendicular so that I have a x value and this x value better be negative because I'm to the left of the y axis. I have a y value. The y value better be positive because I am above the x axis. The radius of this circle I'm gonna let be one unit. I know pi fourths is equivalent to 45 degrees. So I can use the 45, 45, 90 rule to help me figure out values for x and y. The side lengths. The lengths will be equal. They're equal to the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2. I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to rationalize the denominator. I get root 2 over 2. The x should be negative. The y should be positive. But they have the same length, that same value. Cosine is simply the x term. You could think of it as the true definition, the x divided by the radius. But when the radius is just 1, it's just the x value. So, cosine of negative 13 pi fourths is equivalent to negative root 2 over 2. All right, practice doing some more of that. In my next video, I'm going to show you a secret and show you how easy this becomes. It's a secret. Do, your, do some homework problems with